in today's lesson we are going to be looking at one very important topic in accounting it is called how to prepare purchase day book we want to look at how somebody can prepare the purchase day book purchase day book is one of the books one of the subsidiary books of account that is used to record daily purchase on credit so but most times students find it very difficult to prepare this book or understand the systems around the preparation of this book that is why in today's lesson we will take time to explain some of the things that students are supposed to know if not all the things you are supposed to know when you are preparing the purchase day book but before then we'll quickly take our lesson objectives things that will serve as the guide or our focus in today's lesson number one we'll first of all define what purchase day book is and then we'll explain the procedures then we'll look at how we can now prepare the purchase day book and we will answer related questions from the exam guide now, having done that, there's what we call success criteria. We want to look at uh, our success, our success at the end of the lesson. To what extent can we say that we have achieved our 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 lesson objective? One, if we are able to define purchase day book at the end of the lesson, we are able to explain the procedures involved in preparing the purchase day book. If we are able to prepare purchase the book and if we are able to answer related questions from our exam guide now let's look at what purchase the book is all about i have said earlier that it is a book that is used to record daily purchase on credit now i said purchase the book is simply the book prepared to record goods bought on credit from the suppliers on daily weekly or monthly basis it is also called purchase journals. Now, we are saying that a business can decide to transact part of his um, businesses on credit and some other time they want to do on cash. So when a business decides to buy their items on credit, there is need for them to take record of all the goods that is bought on credit. So the, 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 the record that they keep or the book that is prepared to record these transactions either on daily basis, on weekly basis, or on monthly basis is what we call the purchase day book. And then at this point, I want to remind students that the name is not just limited to purchase day book, you can also call it post purchase journals. So anytime you see purchase journals, it's also talking about purchase day book. Now, this book is centered on two very fundamental points. Number one, the total of the purchase day book will be posted to the debit of the debit side of the purchase account and then credited to the personal ledgers of the suppliers. And then the second thing is that it has columns for date, particulars, folio, details, and total. What do I mean by the fact that the total will be posted to the debit side of the purchase account and credited to the personal ledger of the supplier. You, we have established the fact that transactions in every business is centered on two persons. Two persons are just involved in every transaction. One person must be on the giving side and the other person must be on the, re the receiving side. Now, if we want to go back to the, the anthem of accounting, what we call the, the double entering principle that will tell you that for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding entry. And then that will lead us to what we call the debiting and the crediting principle. So now when you debit whoever receives and then you credit whoever gives, you have applied the double entry principle. Now bringing it to the palace of purchase day book, we said that you are going to debit the, the total uh, of the... Uh, Purchase day book will be posted to the debit side of the purchase. What am I saying? I'm saying that because when you buy, you are receiving item. And then when you sell, 
item goes out, that item that you are receiving need to be debited in the purchase account. And then when you sell, because item is going out, that item need to be credited into the sales account. So the person that you are going to buy the item from on credit is called your supplier. So because that item is leaving the person, the person's account need to be credited. And because you are the one buying, receiving the item, the item need to be what? Debited. That is why it has that debit entry in the general ledger and then the credit entry in the personal ledgers of the suppliers. And then we've also explained that it has column for date, particulars, folio, details, and total. By the time we look at example, we are going to appreciate these various columns. But before then, let's look at the procedures. There, is, there are procedures that one need to observe if you are preparing your purchase day book. Number one, you have to observe that purchase day book is centered or, or prepared on what? Daily, weekly, or monthly basis. We must not forget the first thing. The first thing is that every purchase day book is prepared either on daily basis, on weekly basis, or on monthly basis. Somebody will ask me, is it also possible to prepare purchase day book on daily basis? No. Purchase day book is basically prepared on daily basis, weekly basis, or what? Monthly basis, depending on the policy of the company. Some company can say you should enter every transaction on credit, every purchase on credit on daily basis. Some other companies will say let's do it on weekly basis, while some others will say let's do it on monthly basis. Which or which which whichever um whichever policy that is adopted in a company, the fundamental um truth is that. It must be prepared on these two different bases, either these three different bases, rather, either on daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Now, the second thing is that purchase account in the general ledger is what? Debited. Like we have explained earlier, you are going to add up everything that you have bought on credit and then post it in the general ledger. The general ledger is what we call the principal book. We call it the book of books. The general ledger is the, the ledger that contains all other accounts in the organization. So when you open your ledger account, you see the likes of sales, sales account, purchase account, returns account, and so on and so forth. But for purchase day book, whatever you achieve or whatever you have at the end of the period must be transferred and must be debited in the purchase account. Then the last thing we must consider under the procedure is that the supplier's account in the double entry system is what? Credited. We must not forget. You see, I always say, I always tell students that whenever you transact business on cash, there will, there will be no need for you to keep record of the customer or the supplier, the person you are buying the items from. Why will you keep he is all a record. When you have paid, that money that you have paid has terminated the, the contract or the business relationship at that moment. But when there is need or when in a situation where you are not, you are not paying instantaneously, you are not paying instantly, there is need for you to keep record of the person. So as long as you are still indebted to that person, that person remains your creditor. And you remain the debtor of that person. So you have to keep record of this person. So that as at the time when you have agreed to make payment, it will be easier for you to locate that you were owing so, 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 so person. That is why we said that since supplier's account in the double entry system must be what? Credited. Having said this, we have something we are going to do, an illustration that will now drive the message home. At this point, I want students to pay undivided attention because as I'm going to solve this illustration, I am going to take my time to explain the various columns of a purchase day book or what we call the purchase journals. Now, let's look at how a purchase journals look like. A purchase journals will look like this. Let's look at what we have here. He said, write up the purchase journals of Dixon and Sons and post 
to the ledger for the month of August 1995. Now, the person the company that owns this particular book is called the Dixon and Sons. Um, the Dixon and Sons. They are the owner of the book. So we are going to open it in their name. You say Dixon. You write Dixon and Sons. Then you, you write Purchase the book. You roll your line and then we have just few columns. We have the first column will be for date. The second column will be for particulars. The third column will be for folio. For details. We have the folio. Okay, let's take folio before we take the details. We have folios, details, and total. Yeah. Let's take it like this. Have your Naira sign. All right. This is how, this is how a purchase day book looks like it has a column for date it has a column for particulars has a folio for, for folio and has a column for details and the last one is what total now what do we need the date for we need the date to write the period under which the transaction took place and then the particulars the particulars is where you have the description of the transaction that took place why the folio is the um, the page where you can locate this transaction in the general ledger. And then the details will tell you the amount that is involved in each of the transactions. Why the total will now give you the summation of the transactions under a particular, um, the figures under a particular transaction. Now, let's, if you look at it, they said August 14 bought from Coca-Cola. Now, we have different customers we usually buy items from. We have different customers we buy items from. Sometimes you can buy it from individual. Some other time you can buy it from companies. Now, for this particular illustration, we have two particular, we have two customers. We have the Coca-Cola and we have Peterson Limited. These are our various suppliers. The first supplier there is what? Coca-Cola. And then the second supplier is what? Peterson. They said on the 14th of August, we bought from Coca-Cola what? 12 crates of Coke at 100 Naira each. Now, that same date, we bought 3 crates of Fanta at 150 Naira each. And then we had a trade discount of what? 20%. Then you come here, write, what was that date? August 14. You write your August and then you write 14. Now, you are going to write the name of the company or the supplier. The supplier's name is what? Coca-Cola. So, you write Coca-Cola. Now, anybody that, that assesses this account, we know that the, the, the supplier is what? Coca-Cola. What happened? 12 crates of what? 12 crates of Coke at 100 Naira each. 12 crates of Coke at 100 Naira is. That is simply 12 times 100. If you, if you calculate 100 times 12, you will have, you will have, this is 0, this is 0, this is 2, this is 0, 0, 1. You have 0, 0, you have 2, 1. You are going to have 1,200. So you come here and you write your 1,000. Under details, you have 1,200. That will be the value. You have 1,200. And then you look at it again. Three crate of Fanta at 150 Naira each. You write three crate of Fanta at 
150 naira each. That is, you, you make a calculation, 150 times 100, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then you have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, or 5. You have what? You have, this is, this is, let's take it again. It is 3 crates. You have 150 times 3. 150 times, three. we have 3 crates of Fanta at 150 Naira each. So 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry 1. 3 times 3 is 3 plus 1 is what? 4. So what you have there is what? 450. You have 450. Now, this 450, if you add 450 to 1,200, um, 1,200 plus 450, this is 0, this is 5, this is 6, and this is 1. You have 1,600 and 1,650. 1,650. That will be the value. Ordinarily, this will have been our value, the money we are expected to pay to um, Coca-Cola at the end of 14th of August. But there is a clause that they said trade discount of 20% was given. So because of that trade discount, you are going to you are going to calculate charge that trade discount on this value. So you are going to have 20 over 100 times 1650. This zero we cancel this. This zero we cancel this zero. You'll be left with what? 165 times 2. Let's do it together times 2. 2 times 10 is 2 times 5 is 10. Carry 1. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1, 13. Carry 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So your discount here is simply 300 and what? And 30. So this 330, you are going to subtract. You are going to subtract it from. So you simply write it like this. You write less discount. Less discount of 20%. So when you do that, you have 20 over 100 times 1650. This will give you 330. You have 330. So you are going to subtract 330 from this value. Let's do it together. You have 1650 minus 330. This is 0. 3 minus 5 is 2. 3 minus 6 is 3. And then you have your, your 1 here. So when you subtract here from here, you, you'll be left with 1, 3, 2, 0. So this 1, 3, 2, 0 is what you have arrived at. This is the value that we are expected to pay. Um, Dixon and Son is expected to pay Coca-Cola at the end of 14th of what? Of August. Now, having done that, let's make progress. We have another transaction there. What happened? On the 18th of August, we bought from what? Peterson. What did we buy? We bought 150 bags of flour at 50 naira each. And then we also bought 800 soaps at 2 naira each. It's also subject to what? 10% discount. You come here, you write August. August what? August 18. Now, this August 18, what happened? We bought from who? From Peterson. Peterson Limited. Now, what did we buy? We bought 150 bags of what? Of flour. At 50 Naira each. That will give us 150 times... 150 times 50 
you have zero, zero we go into here, zero, and then zero. This is zero. This is 25. You write five, carry two, and then this is five plus this is seven. So you have zero, zero, five, seven. You have 7,500. So this value will give you 7,500. 7,500. So this will give you what? 7,500. All right. Now, let's make progress. We, we, it didn't end there. We also bought 800 soaps. At what? At 2 Naira each. Let's calculate 800 times 2. This is 0, 0, 16. That's 1,600. We have 1,600. So for this transaction, we have what? 1,600. So what you're going to do, just like what we did here, you're going to add this to this. You add 7,500 to 1,600. Let's do the addition together. 7,500 plus 1,600. This is 0. This is 0. This is 11. Carry 1. 1 plus 7 is 8 plus R1, 9. You have 9,100. 9,100. 9,100. This 9,100 that you have is going to be the total. So you come here, you write your 9,100. 9,100 ordinarily is what we are supposed to pay um, Peterson Limited. But there is a clause. The clause is that this, thing, this transaction is subjected to what? 10% discount. Now, because of space, um, I'm going to make it very brief so you'll be able to see what I am doing. Now, we are going to repeat the whole of this here. What we did on this first transaction, we are still going to repeat it here. You come under it and you write your less what? Discount. Less discount. Discount of what? Discount of 10%. Let's do the, dis the discount where you can see very well. The discount, we are going to calculate 10% on this. So it's going to be 10 over 100 times what? 9,100. This zero, we cancel this zero. This zero, we cancel this zero. You will be left with what? 10 times 91. This is supposed to give you 910. So 910 is the discount. So your discount here now is 910. You have 910. You are going to subtract your 910 from 9,100. Let's do the subtraction together as well. Now, bring up your 9,100 and then your 9,100. Let's subtract. 0 from 0, you have 0. 1 cannot be subtracted. You cannot subtract 1 from 0. What you do? You borrow 1 from here and then you have 10 here. When you subtract 1 from 10, you have 9. And then here would be zero. Now, take one from here to that zero. It will give you 10. Subtract nine from 10. You have what? One. And then here you'll be left with eight. So your answer is going to be what? 8,190. So this 8,190 will be written under the total column. So you have 8,190. By the time you add... 8,190 to 1,320. Let's do the addition. You have 1,320. I have 8,190. This is 0. 9 plus 2 is 11. Carry 1. Then 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And then um, 1 plus 8 is 9. So you now have 9... Five one zero. So at the end, what you have is nine thousand 
510. That 9510 is what we call the total of the purchase day book. Okay, now, you, if you observe this, you will see that we have 1320 as a value we are expected to pay to Coca-Cola. Why 8,190 is a value we are expected to pay to Peterson. So what usually happens if the, um, in the introductory part of the lesson, I said that the total of the um, purchase day book will be posted to the debit side of the purchase account in the what? General ledger. So the 9,510 is what will be posted to the debit side of the purchase journals in the general ledger. However, 1,320 is expected to be credited to what? Coca-Cola. And then 8,190 is expected to be credited to what? To Peterson Limited. The reason is because Coca-Cola has given out a value, so they need to be credited. And then Peterson has also given out a value and they need to be what? Credited. Meanwhile, Dixon and Sons, they are the ones receiving the value. That is why they need to be debited. All right, so far we have explained this. We want to quickly check our um, exam guide. If we can see questions that relate to what we are doing, so we can take one or two to further explain what we have done so far. Now, when you click on your exam guide, you see the options that is displayed on the screen. And then the subject is accounting. That is why you see that account is already ticked. And then when you get to the year, you see different years. Students are advised to take any year depending on the particular year of interest. And, but for the sake of this lesson, we are selecting random because random will help us to bring all the questions that relate to what we are doing. And then once you are done with that, you can now click on get started. All the questions we are supposed to, you are supposed to know or you are supposed to answer will just pop up on pop up on its own. Now they said which of the following, which of the following is one of the uses of a journal proper? Let's see a question that relates to purchase um, journals. This one is for sales journals. This one is for sales journals. This one is for personal journal. Okay, books of account are open. This one is also for this one's for journals. Okay, they said that entries in the purchases journals are transferred to the dash A receivable ledger, payable ledger, private ledger, and what general ledger. I have explained that the total of the purchase day book or purchase journal will be transferred to the um, general um, ledger. They say, which of the following has multiple uses? We have the purchase journal, return outwards journal, sales journals, and then general journal. What they are trying to find out here is, which of this account can attend to more than one particular transaction? Purchase journal is just for transactions on credit, purchase on credit, while return outwards is basically goes return back to supplier. Sales journal is simply for sales uh, on credit, but general journals house all other transactions. So the answer is D. All right, so far, that is the much we can take under our exam guide. Now, before we we come to the end of the lesson let's quickly do a review of what we have done so far we have explained the purchase day book and then we said purchase day book is simply used to record daily purchase on credit it said it can it may not be just daily it can be weekly it can be monthly and then we have said that you you may also call it purchase journals that is not just purchase day book you can also call it what purchase journals and then when we look at the procedures we say first of all that it is prepared for um, daily purchase on credit and then we said that the total of the 
purchase day book, which is what we have done on the board, will be transferred to the debit side of the purchase, leg the purchase journal in the general ledger. And then the corresponding entry, which is what we call the double entry part of it, will be credited to the supplier's account. And then we also explain the fact that whenever you are preparing your day book, your purchase day book, you should not forget that it has a column for date, has a column for particulars, has a column for folio, has a column for details, and it also has a column for what? For total. And then we took an example that really, really explained what we are talking about. The, in the example, we saw how we bought some items from Coca-Cola and then we bought some items from um, Peterson Limited. I recommend very strongly that students should take time and then solve more examples so that they can be home with the message.